Hey guys, I'm back. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, light, light speed, and how you can potentially beat it. Okay, so first we have to define what is light speed. Well, light isn't light speed isn't simply just the fastest speed light can go because light doesn't actually go at constant speed. It's like there's no human speed or there's no car speed. Cars and people can go different speeds, just like light. Light goes different speeds through different mediums, okay? So the light speed you're probably all familiar with, C, is the speed of light in a vacuum, okay? This is the fastest light speed, okay? So when you refer to light speed, you're referring to C, and you're referring to the actual speed of light in a vacuum, which is around 186,000 miles per hour or 300,000 kilometers, or not miles, yeah, miles per hour, or 300,000 kilometers per hour. So, no, sorry, 186,000 miles per second and 300,000 kilometers miles. 300,000 kilometers per second, I'm sorry. So, that's what you refer to when you refer to light speed, the speed of light in a vacuum. This is the so-called universal speed limit. Nothing can beat it, but we'll see about that. But light goes different other speeds through different mediums. Can't possibly go faster than that speed, but they can go slower. So, for instance, light goes slower through air, goes slower through water, it goes much slower through glass, and these speeds are all slightly slower. The reason for this is that if you were to take a look at something like air, close up, you have lots of little particles here, molecules. Okay? And what happens is that light actually interacts with these molecules. So what happens is it's going to come in at the speed of light in a vacuum, and it's going to interact with some molecules, and it's going to move to a different molecule, and it's going to bounce all around. Now, when it's moving between the molecules, the photons, which are the quanta of light, particles of light, are still moving at the speed of light in a vacuum. But the thing is that the light actually takes some time to interact with the molecule. So it's going to go the speed of light in a vacuum. It's going to interact with the molecule, which is going to take some time. It's going to go the speed of light in a vacuum until it interacts with another one, which is going to take some time. Speed of light in a vacuum until it interacts with another one. Okay? And there are two reasons why this is going to slow it down. One is because it takes some time to interact. Okay, so that means that it's actually going to slow down its average speed. The second one is because it's bouncing around between molecules, it might not actually take the most direct path. Whereas in a vacuum, the only thing that's really going to be able to change it is gravity, and that's only going to curve it slightly. Okay, so uh, the two reasons light's going to go slower through mediums is because it takes time to interact, even though it goes the speed of light in a vacuum between the particles. And it's not necessarily going to take the most direct route. It can go bounce all over the place. Not to say that you know, some light probably will take a direct route, but others won't. So the average is going to be much slower. Okay, so that's uh, the reason light has different speeds in different mediums. And it's going to be slower in those mediums than it will be in a vacuum, which is its fastest possible speed. Okay? And there are actually two particles that can hit light speed. You have the photon and the gluon. And you'll notice the reason these particles can hit light speed is because... They're massless. They have no mass. So only a massless particle can get light speed, okay, in a vacuum. Okay, that's just something interesting uh, that I thought I'd share with you, is that the reason that no other particle can get to light speed is because they have mass. You can, however, accelerate a particle with mass up to almost the speed of light. 99.999999999, lots of nines percent, okay? And, uh... They do this in particle accelerators, so the LHC, the LEP, Tevatron, uh, SLAC, RIC, all those particle accelerators are going to get it up to relativistic um, uh, points. They're going to reach the point of transition is what it's called. And in particle accelerators, transition is when, uh, when you add energy, the particle doesn't go faster because it can't go faster because there's the speed limit of the speed of light. So instead it just gets more mass. So you can sort of use this these two things, to make a particle go faster than the light. Now, the particle's not going to go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum, but it will actually beat the photons. So let me explain. Okay, if you have a laser and a beam of particles, we'll say electrons, okay? And the beam of electrons, you have a, you know, linear accelerator, accelerates it up, reaches the point of transition, and now you have electrons going 99.9999% of the speed of light in a vacuum, Okay? And then you have a little window at the end, a window made of germanium or something like that, that while some of the electrons will interact with this window, most of them will just pass through with uh, no problems, okay? It'll be like it's not even there, a very thin window. Then you surround the end of this accelerator in 
say water or you could go glass. Glass is an easy one, okay? That way you wouldn't even need the window. So let's go glass. Uh, you just stick glass at the end, um, creates the seals up the vacuum, and then you have a bunch of glass. Then right next to this, you put a laser, okay? Laser is going to emit photons. You stick the laser right up to the glass. So that way the accelerator, when the electrons hit the glass and when the laser hits the glass, is going to be the same exact time, okay? Now, these electrons will actually beat the light through the glass, okay? I'm not quite sure what the distance you would need. It had to be a very specific distance. But in that specific distance, the electrons will actually go faster than the speed of light. That's because the electrons, so the light is going to go and it's going to move at the speed of light through glass because it's going to go light speed, interact with the glass, and it's not necessarily going to take the most direct route, just like we talked, uh, just like I said before. However, the electrons are actually going to go 99.99999% of the speed of light, and they're going to slowly slow down by interacting with the glass over a period of time. Okay, so whatever the speed of light in glass is, we'll say it's around, you know, 60%. I, I'm just making that number out of thin air. Okay, we'll say it's around 60% of what it is in the vacuum. Uh, it doesn't really matter what that percentage is. I'm just giving, picking some arbitrary number to demonstrate the concept. So say the speed of light is 60% in glass of what it is in a vacuum. Okay, and the electrons are going 99.99999% of the speed of light. That means we have almost 40% or 39.99999% of the speed of light or percent of the speed of the electrons that we can lose. So 39.999% of the speed of the electron can be lost before the electrons even going as fast as the light. And then once you lose 40, the electrons are going to go slower. So the electrons are going to lose this momentum over a period of time where they are interacting with the uh, glass, okay? Whereas the light is going to maintain a constant speed of 60% of the speed of light through glass. So in that period of time where the electrons actually slow down and they go from being faster than the speed of light and they go, they get closer to the speed of the light in the glass, I should say, and then they finally reach the speed of light in the glass and then they start to go slower at the speed of light in the glass. The point where they reach the speed of light in the glass, they have been going faster than light. They will beat the photons to that point every time because they have more momentum. They're going faster. They, are, however, are not going faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, so the photons between the particles are still going faster than the electrons are. However, the electrons can lose all that speed before. So you can actually make something go faster than light. It's not impossible. It's just you can't make something go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, so we've now determined that, yes, something can go faster than light. It can beat, electrons can beat light through glass or through water or even through air. But can something go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum, not just light itself? Turns out the answer is yes, okay? Now, this can get a little uh, confusing, but bear with me here, okay? So we know that light goes the speed of light in a vacuum because it doesn't have any mass. However, light particles are still particles, okay? The force of electromagnetism, which is light as we know it, is carried by a boson, okay? And that boson is called the photon, okay? That's the particle of light. Okay, so in essence, you can say, light is carried by the photon, or the electromagnetic force is manifested in the photon. Okay, now, what can go faster than light is actually information. The reason information can go faster than light, as far as we know, is because it doesn't manifest itself in any form, it's not carried by something. So, for instance, something like the weak force can't go faster than light because the weak force is carried by the W and Z bosons, which have mass. Even if they didn't have mass, it could only go the speed of light, okay? So something like strong force is manifested through the gluon, okay? The gluon has no mass, so it can travel at the speed of light, but it can't go faster, okay? The reason information can go faster is because there's no particle that is the carrier, or there's no boson for information, if you will, because if you know bosons carry forces, there's no boson, there's nothing that carries the force or carries information, if you will, okay? And when I say information, I refer to quantum numbers, okay? So anything, quantum numbers uh, sort of tell you what a particle is, the spin, um, stuff like that, okay? So uh, that's what I say when I mean information, I mean quantum numbers. Okay, so let me explain. If you were to have a particle accelerator, okay? Say you had the LHC, except only 
you only focused on one collision. So in the LHC, you have many, 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 many thousands of collisions uh, in every bunch. Okay, so you were to focus on one of these collisions, and it was to produce two photons, okay? Both photons would always go in the opposite direction, okay? They, we've measured this. Both photons always go in the opposite direction. Now, somehow, one photon has to know which way the other is going. Otherwise, they couldn't both go in the opposite direction all the time. Okay? And they do this instantaneously. It's not like one goes this way and one goes this way, and then it splits and goes the opposite direction. Always instantly, from the collision point, they go the opposite direction, which means that these photons must be transmitting information faster than the speed of light because they instantly go faster than each other, okay? So you can actually transmit information instantaneously. To give you another example, if you were to have a photon that was, you know, at Alpha Proxima Centauri, okay? Proxima Centauri is the closest star. It's uh, four or five light years away-ish. If you were to have a photon there, and you were to have a photon here, and you took the photon here, and you change something. You change the direction of its spin. Um, you gave it some momentum, switched its direction, something like that. Instantly, okay, zero time, the photon in Proxima Centauri would do it. So there's absolutely no delay. The information is transmitted instantaneously. What happens to one happens to the other, except it's not like that because it happens at the same time to both of them. Okay. So that's how you can do it. This is twin photons, okay? This uh, sort of twin photon concept. The, these photons uh, somehow, if they're created in the same collision, are somehow twinned and can share information instantaneously. You know, if you change the direction of one, the direction of the other instantaneously changes, okay? So this information actually travels faster than the speed of light. Okay, so they're, they're investigating this for use in information technologies and banking and stuff because the, the, this information is only available at the two photons. So it's not like, you know, a secure, it's, much, it's the most secure connection possible because you have to physically have the other photon because the information is only between the two. That's the only way you can get it. And also it's really fast, so we can use this for, you know, space. You know, if you have something, say, in Mars that takes, you know, 12 hours, or not Mars, Jupiter, it takes like 12 hours for the radio signal to bounce back to Earth, that would take zero time, like actually zero time, for the signal to get back using these twin photons, okay? So you can actually transmit information faster than the speed of light. Now, this presents some interesting aspects. No longer do you have the usual cause and effect relationship uh, that we're used to. Okay, so with conventional physics, since everything is limited to a specific speed, there's cause and effect. So, you know, these two particles can come together, which causes a boson to be formed, which, can, which, then, uh, causes, which then the effect is to decay. So you have cause and effect, okay? Or just a regular, regular world example, you know, you push, uh, you push the gas pedal on your car and it goes, okay? There's a time, the cause of the car going is pushing the gas pedal, and the effect of pushing the gas pedal is to make the car go. Now, when that happens instantaneously, okay, there is no cause and effect. So, so for, to take the car example, you can't cause the car to go by pressing the gas pedal because the car instantly goes when you press the gas pedal. So cause and effect doesn't make any sense because they both happen at the same time. So was the cause the car going and the effect was you pressing the gas pedal or was it reversed? You can't tell because they both happened at the same time. Same thing with, with these photons. Say you were at one end and the satellite was at the other end, okay? And you're transmitting information to the satellite. So you do something to this photon and you change its momentum, you change its direction, and the photon at the satellite would instantly change. You don't know if you or the satellite actually caused that change because it happens at the same time. So you could say, well, you, I definitely know. I was definitely trying to make the photon change. But since they both changed their momentum or whatever at the same exact time, there is no cause and effect because it happens at the same time. So in fact, the satellite could have caused that photon, but that doesn't make any sense either because then because your photon changed at the same time, cause and effect, you know, the typical, the most fundamental thing that we're all used to, you know, I do this and it results in this, doesn't make any sense when stuff is transmitted instantaneously because they both happen at the same time. So the cause and effect, you know, it doesn't make sense. So that's just an interesting aspect that if you're trying to transmit information with this, 
does the you know to a satellite or to somebody else across the world instantaneously who's actually transmitting the information because both of them are changing at the same time so you know and who's receiving the information it could be that you're receiving the information and they're transmitting the information or you're transmitting it and they're receiving it but neither of those make sense because then the reverse can also be true because it happens instantaneously so really logic just totally breaks down uh, which is just something interesting to wrap your mind around but I hope you enjoyed learning how things can go faster than photons and can how information can actually travel faster than the speed of light with this twin photon stuff uh, I find it fascinating um, so thanks for watching